Welcome to module 6 of the ongoing series on hidden marker models. And this time we're going to tackle the notion of learning uh, a hidden marker model. And we've seen quite a few algorithms already. So we've seen HMM as a parser, as a language model. And now we're going to tackle the first of the learning cases. So we want to learn the parameters of HMM and this one is focused on the notion of supervised learning, which means we learn from uh, examples that are actually given. The state sequences are given to us. They are not hidden. So uh, to remind you, HMM is entirely defined by these uh, probabilities. Uh, start probability, one for each state. Transition probability, also one for each state. And a emission probability, also one for each state. And the important conditions that we want to keep in mind are these constraints that say that uh, for each state, these probabilities should sum to 1. Okay, And we're going to use this running example of the same uh, toy HMM that we've been using before. So our task is to find the values for the parameters of the HMM. So what are the parameters? Well, there's one parameter each, one for each state to start in that state. So pi sub a, pi sub n. The transition probabilities going from a to n, a to itself, n to n, n to itself, n to a, n, n to itself, and then the emission probability. So finding all of these values constitutes learning. So if you find these values, now we have HMM, we can use it as a parser or as a language model. Okay, we've already seen those algorithms. So, in this particular setting of supervised learning, we're going to learn from fully observed data. So we call it labeled data. And we're given a sequence, a series of examples where someone, uh, maybe a human expert, has labeled each word with the right part of speech tag in context. So in this case, you have x1, y1, where there's killer clown, and somebody has told us that killer is a noun and the clown is a noun, right? Um, and there's a whole, we can't just learn from one example, so we have many, many examples, or in this case we have six, or usually we might have thousands. So one piece of notation is x1 here is input, and y1 is the desired state sequence. So killer clown is a sequence and then noun noun is a sequence and the interpretation is of course like this right um, we are mapping each uh, word in sequence to the uh, states in sequence so let's say we have m labeled examples and we call so these were in our case m is equal to six right in that example and then we have for each example we call it x sub L, Y sub L. So that's one of these uh, examples is an observation sequence and a state sequence. And for any X, Y pair, we can compute the probability using the HMM, right? So for example, if you have X1 is killer clown, Y1 is NN, we know what the probability of that should be according to our HMM. So we don't know the values of these pi be a, the transition emission and start state probabilities yet. But we know that if we have an HMM, then to compute killer clown as a noun noun sequence, we start as a noun, we generate killer as a noun, we transition from a noun to a noun, and we generate clown as a noun, right? So that gives us the sequence N, N. Uh, straightforward. And we can do that for the second one, killer problem exactly the same situation except instead of clown we generated problem as a noun in a adjective noun we start as an adjective generate crazy an adjective go to a noun using a uh, sub a sub uh, a comma n and then generate problem as a noun and so on and the sequences could be arbitrarily long so in this case the longest sequence is three but you get the idea you can generate as many sequence as you want. In this case you go from n to an a and then from a to an n. 
So if we have n a n, we generated, we started off at n, we took an n to an a, and then a to an n. And then we did all the necessary emissions for what we uh, have in that particular example. Now there's a lot of uh, parameters being used here. We want to collect it all for all of these labeled examples altogether. Okay, so that's going to be useful notation for us. Um, so if we want to collect all of them, well, we know that all of the examples are independent of each other. So if you wanted to compute this, you could just multiply these together, right? We multiply all of these terms together, and the term you get when you multiply all of these terms together is what is equal to that, right? So this is what. But um, we want a more convenient notation to write that down. So let's just look at all of the uh, pi sub n's. So how many times did we start at a noun? Well, you can actually count that. We started once, twice, three times, four times. So out of six times, four times we started at a noun. So pi n, pi sub n gets used four times. And pi sub a, we know, gets used twice. How many times did we use uh, a noun to noun transition? Um, a noun to noun transition occurs um, once, twice, uh, anymore. Nope. So should be two times. N to an A is again two times. A to an N is uh, four times. You can see here is one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, how many times did we see A to an A? Well, um, turns out zero times. And then we just count all the emissions. How many times did we see killer as a noun? Um, so sometimes you could see killer, if it's an ambiguous word, you might see it uh, both as a noun and an adjective, right? So you count how many times you see each one as a particular part of speech, and that gives you the emission probability. So in the end, um, we have this, which encapsulates all of the parameters used for this particular label set. And the idea is we want to be able to set these parameters to make this particular sequence of observations the most likely. So we want to set these values to be, uh, to make these observations likely and the observations we didn't see uh, unlikely. So that's going to be our idea for setting these parameters. But first let's just generalize this notation. So these are the frequencies, the number of times you saw something at the initial state, number of times you saw a state follow another one, and number of times you saw an emission at a state. And then according to the HMM, for a particular XY pair, this uh, sequence, um, uh, this product gives us the entire probability of a particular XY sequence. Okay, so this is nothing more, so if you look at this exponent, that's just corresponding to the exponent you see over here. So in this case, um, if I saw a n n another time, right, I could just write it as a n n squared. So that's all we're doing here. So this exponent is what is uh, written down as this frequency here, f. So that's just the same notation we just saw. And usually we don't have just one uh, labeled uh, sequence. We have many of them, so x1, y1, and so on until xm, ym. So we just multiply them all together, just like we did in that example. So this is a product of all the examples, and these are the frequencies that occurred per example. Right. Um, so the idea is they'll, they'll all just get multiplied together and we can get the probability of this corpus. Okay. So if this is the probability, we can, um, it's easier or more convenient to work with uh, log probabilities. So we want to take the log of P of L. So that's what we call L of theta. So notice that it's parameterized by this theta 
and theta is nothing but pi and a and b. So theta is just these th uh, three probability, well, this group of three probability distributions. And it's um, can be written down as the sum. So when you take the logs, this products become sums, right? So this one becomes sums. And log of a to the b is b log a, right? So if you apply that to this, you get that. To this, you get that. And you apply that, transform to this, you get that. So it's really uh, straightforward. You get logs, and logs are much nicer, uh, as we'll see to work with. Okay, so now we have a, a expression that's the log probability of the data, and it's uh, written with respect to these parameters pi, a, b. And note, we are actually trying to learn these values. So we are setting up uh, the problem as we have some data, we can now phrase it in terms of what probabilities are going to be useful to generate that data. Um, okay, so L of theta is the log probability of this label data. We want to find the theta that will give us the maximum value of L theta. And in order to do that, um, the easiest way to think about it is this function is if you just had two parameters, you could think of it as hill climbing on this space of L theta. And we want to find the maximum value here, right? Well, the maximum value there is where the derivative uh, is going to be zero, right? So that's the tangent line. So all we need is to find the derivative and set it to zero. Um, that's uh, the place where we'll find the maximum value. And I've actually derived it in a separate video lecture, but once you do find the derivative and set it to zero, you can find that the values of pi and a sub i j and b sub i o that will maximize it have a very intuitive uh, meaning. Well, you just count the number of times you see something in a certain state, and then you count all of the other states. So let's say that uh, n you saw four times, and everything else, including n, you saw six times. Then pi of n will just be four divided by six. Okay, so that's uh, two thirds. Um, so it just comes down, so the derivation basically, taking the derivative, etc is uh, a way to justify the usual counting rule. The usual counting rule is count the number of times something occurred, divide by count, divide by the sum of everything that occurred, and that will give you a probability. Okay, so let's look at an example. Um, here's a label data, um, same as before, and we want to find the values of pi sub i, so one for each state, that maximize the likelihood of this data. Now it's going to be two-thirds and one-third, so pi sub n is two-thirds, because we saw n four times, and we saw a twice. So for n, it's going to be four divided by six, and for a, uh, it's going to be two divided by six, right? So that gives us the two probabilities, this one and that one. Um, so it's just counting, normalizing. Um, same with the transitions. So you get a sub uh, n comma n. Um, a sub n comma n, well, that's 2 divided by 2 plus 2, that's 4. So that's a half. And then the other case, which is going to an adjective, is also 2 by 4, right? So this accounts for that, this accounts for that. And the other case, which is really simple, because one of the options you saw only 0 times, adjective going to adjective. So adjective almost it has to always go to a noun. 
and the same with the emissions let's do one of these emissions so in this case you have three uh, over the sum of three plus four plus three right so that's three over ten which is why you get that and same here you get four over ten and then three over ten so it's just counting normalizing and we're done we get uh, all of the values that we need in order to run all of the different algorithms that we uh, looked at HMM as a parser or as a language model